This is Jones here, and this is what's going to happen when an idiot tries to explain mechanics. But, just bear with me here, because if you ever notice internal combustion motors, they lack, or they, they lose power on the compression stroke. They are constantly fighting each other when, on the compression stroke. So, for there's an initial explosion, and then the next piston comes up, as the piston goes, oh, sorry, let's start that over again. You have an intake stroke, a compression stroke, a, a combustion stroke, and an exhaust stroke. That's the basis of a four-stroke motor. You lose power on the compression stroke because it has to compress, it has to fight with the air to be compressed. And I was just wondering, you ever heard of a scramjet? Have you ever heard of a turbine, a steam turbine? So this is what, it's just a very basic idea but the fewer moving parts, the better. And I don't know what kind of energy you can produce with it or how efficient it might be, but, the, but I can almost guarantee that it's more reliable. It's just a lot less moving parts. And it's, it's, a, it's basically, it's a, it's a weird way to do a steam turbine, pretty much. It's a steam turbine using, using explosive gas, pretty much. We'll, we'll find out. Let me explain it real fast. This is a very rough drawing. This is more like a plumbing drawing because I did plumbing before. So what you have here is an air intake connected to a check valve to an expansion chamber. This is where the where gas and fuel is put together and combusted. It goes out through the other check valve. You have to have the check valve here because you cannot have back pressure. That's the reason for the check valves. It has to flow one way. You pass through this check valve into the turbine. And to get this really start to go in, you, you pass the turbine and it also starts to spin the turbo. The turbo will compress air, send it back into the inlet, and the second combustion will, get, you know, hopefully this will just continue to get stronger and stronger. The more air fuel mixture and more com more pressure you can put in the expansion chamber, the more powerful you're gonna be. And of course you have the flywheel to store the mechanical energy that you create and then of course the flywheel can be attached to anything clutch pulley generator whatever i don't know it's just something that popped in my head while i was thinking about internal combustion engines and a way to uh one make things more simpler more reliable and still use a form of combustible fuel whether it be anything from and you can practically use anything on this really anything that that forms an explosion Diesel will probably not be something very good to use on this because the, the, the volatility of diesel is not very high. But gasoline, ethanol, methane, um, hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. You can probably just use pure hydrogen and then the actual air will, the air that you feed into it. Now I think the hardest part, you're probably going to have to have some kind of starter motor or some um, something to get the mechanics moving. And it, it might have a little bit of a warm up stage. But it's basically, it's basically instead of using the, the propellant as a rocket, you know how a rocket shoots out propellant from the tail end, that's how it produces thrust. Instead of that, it's just taking that, that propellant and using that energy to spin a turbine to create mechanical energy. Hopefully, I don't, I'm not an engineer, okay? But it's just one of those things that came to mind. Anyway, uh, sorry for my horrible drawing. I was never an artist. I was never an artist, but as you can tell, I got some scribble scrabble all over the place. But this is basic mechanical drawing. And in my head, it works. So I just wonder if has someone done this before. I actually looked around for different kind of motors. I found different, I found rotary, jets, steam driven engines, steam pistons, steam turbines. I was just like, whoa, this is a mix of a rocket and a steam turbine to create mechanical energy. I have the biggest problem I see is the materials that you use to spin the turbine it has to be incredibly heat resistant. Um, but we're coming out with new stuff every day. I'm sure this can spin at a pretty high RPM. I'm almost sure of it because you're, you're not, you know, you don't have connected rods. You don't have a um, 
you're not working with a crankshaft, you don't have crankshaft bearings that'll burn out. This is basically a thing that spins, so it could probably spin as fast as a pro like a propeller. And I'm sure you can go really high RPM. I'm pretty sure it might be low torque, depending on the explosion that, that happens in the expansion chamber. I'm pretty sure it might be low torque. It might be a build up to it. And I guess you can remedy that by increasing the weight of the flywheel to uh, store more store more of that mechanical energy through momentum. You can throw, uh, the heavier the flywheel, the more momentum it carries. It's just a lot harder to initially turn it off, but it would be harder to slow it down if that makes sense. It makes sense to me, I hope it makes sense to you. Anyway, Jones.